Welcome to the 10 Acre Woods. My name's Mark. It is currently April 13th, 2024, and it's a beautiful day, sun shining, a uh, good time to start on our solar project. Uh, so my wife Tara and daughter Tiana are down there right now. Uh, we're going to be putting the solar array. It's a 10.5 kilowatt, uh, and it's going to be going along the side of that building up into about where this tree is right here. Uh, so there's a bunch of trees in here. Some of these really tall ones up here are pretty dead uh, and they're within striking distance of the site. Uh, so I'm going to go out and uh, start on that. Last, uh, last summer we had a company come out called Prairie House to do an energy audit. Uh, so the energy audit consists of going around and looking at a number of different things in the uh, in, inside the house, the insulation, the windows, uh, how airtight the house is, uh, and solar is a, a part of that. So I was looking to get a, a government grant. Uh, there is one for Manitoba here, Efficiency Manitoba, and then there is what's called the Greener Homes Grant, which is the federal grant. Uh, so to get in on that, I needed to have this evaluation done, uh, and uh, it looks like like when the house was built in 2008, they didn't put enough insulation in the attic, R28. Uh, the standard is R50 here in Manitoba. Uh, so the energy audit goes through and gives you what your current status is and compares it to a new home uh, and what is expected in a new home. Uh, and it kind of looks like uh, there's a, an energy guide that's on a lot of appliances that say how efficient the uh, the appliance is. Uh, and this is an energy audit that tells you how efficient your home is. Uh, so we're hoping to um, cut our utility bill down. Uh, theoretically, 34% of our usage should be covered by this 10.5 kilowatt system. So that's it now. Uh, I better get out there and help the girls. And the next stage will be, um, I believe, installation of the piles for the array. It's now September 2nd, so two months later, uh, there has been a couple things that we've had to work out since the uh, poles went in during the installation. Uh, so you can see those went in and are now ready for the framing for the panels. Uh, but one thing that came up is our power company, Manitoba Hydro, uh, had some issues with our meter uh, and its location. Excuse me, guys. It's, uh, is it dinner time getting close? Yeah, I know, Petey. <laughs> so here is our, uh, our hydrometer right here. So it's been here for uh, about 20 years now, and uh, they don't like it in with the animals. Uh, everything's shielded. Uh, the power shielded. Uh, they haven't done anything to the pole, uh, but uh, they prefer that it be away from the animals. Uh, so what we had done is we had installed a new pole here. Uh, we've had to close off this area. This is where our chickens were. Uh, we're gonna change things up a little bit, uh, but they wanted the pole in an area with no animals. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, we've installed the pole we're then gonna trench from this pole around to that one. We have to go down two and a half feet uh, to get down uh, far enough so that they can lay the, uh, the new electrical wire and connect it to that one, uh, which then runs off underground to the house. So we've held off on digging the trench just so we can get a date uh, rather than leaving a tr an open trench here around with the animals. Uh, so we do have some dates. 
tomorrow on September 3rd, uh, the installation will start with the racking and the panels. Uh, so that's supposed to take two days. And then there is a um, scheduled booking for, I believe it's September 12th and 13th. Yeah, 12th and 13th is the next one. Uh, so that'll all be installed. I'm not sure when they're gonna be running the wire through. They might do it all that one day, uh, but this splice is gonna happen then. So Hydro is gonna have to go out to the pole, which is just out there, and they'll have to disconnect it. And then of course, they'll have to uh, disconnect up here. Uh, and then bring it over. This is the uh, solar company is going to do this once Hydro has done their bit uh, by shutting it off. And then they'll move it over to the top of this pole. And then the box will move over and then Hydro will slide in the new bi-directional meter so that they can gauge uh, when we're producing more power than we're using. Then it gets fed back into the grid and our meter I guess goes backwards or something like that. <laughs> Not quite sure how that works yet. We will find out that in a couple weeks time. So the guys from Powertech Solar are scheduled to be here tomorrow and I've got a camera all set up to capture that. So we'll do another time lapse and here it goes. All breakers are on. We are now collecting solar. <laughs> so it's now November 15th. Uh, and of course, as you saw, we have uh, everything hooked up. Now we had a little bit of a time uh, between when it finished October 30th and they switched it on to when they put the 
uh, communication device that goes in the house that hooks up to our router that is able to communicate with the inverters on the solar panels uh, and then give us our data for the app so that we can see actually what we're producing. It's uh, mid-November, the sun's shining today, so we're making some power. That's exciting. So here are the micro-inverters, uh, and there's a number of them. I believe there are, uh, what is it? There's, I think, four panels hooked up per inverter, and there's two sections to the inverter. So uh, there's wires that run, you can see, up and along and down there. So there's two wires that come in, that run in through here and they come into this breaker and this breaker is array A and B so we've got 25 uh, amp breaker here and a 25 amp breaker here and they both feed into this 50 amp breaker here so we have control to shut down one of the two arrays or the entire system here now uh, it is my understanding that if there is a catastrophic catastrophic issue there is another breaker at the house we can shut off as well as one on the panel so um, safety you know there's lots of safety put into uh, put into this system uh, so you've got your main line that runs here to the house and then runs underneath the driveway so it runs up and then it runs over to the main house breaker so if there's an issue for whatever reason, there's a short, there's a fire on the solar array, who knows, um, this is your main breaker to shut off to the house. And then of course this runs back up and it comes over and into the house right there. So the breaker panel is on the other side of this wall in the basement. Um, they did something here. <laughs> so I was looking at this and they took this putty and put it in it looks like they tried to drill some holes to go directly in here but our basement is what's called ICF insulated concrete forms so it's not a standard wood frame here this is a concrete slab in between essentially two pieces of styrofoam uh, with rebar so yeah, the communication here wasn't great. We could have told them this if they had come out with the plan. So there was a few issues uh, that we had with them. And the biggest one was communication. So then they realized, oh, I guess all the wiring is all going through up here. I guess that's probably where it should go. So the other issue we had with this panel here, this was not the original location uh, that, they, uh, that they were installing it. And again, it comes down to communication. Um, so it was a little bit of a, a weak point in the communication on them. Uh, they originally installed it here. There are uh, screw holes here that it was mounted and then they just put the screws back in. So the issue we had was, of course, if we walk over to our stairs, and this is our main entry point here, uh, there was this big, big breaker sitting right here in the middle of a nicely finished wall. So we said, no, you need to put it in another. It's got to be in an accessible area, which I completely understand, but not in the middle of the wall. So um, so if you're getting solar installed, make sure that you do a walkthrough um, and get everything figured out. I wasn't here, but Tara was. So maybe, you know, maybe I should have taken the day off. Um, but uh, really oversee and find out uh, from this video, you now know what to expect and what goes into the system. It may vary in different areas, but here, of course, you can see the system and uh, there's lots of shutoffs. So just make sure you're talking to the contractors and saying, okay, where is the main shutoff being put on the house? Talk to them about that, come up with a solution. Where are you going into the house? Oh, yeah, you can't go in there. You've got to go in through here. Uh, so just a few little things of that. Well, hello, Turbo. How are you today? Oh, look in your lips. <laughs> Done with breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so a little change that we've noticed is, well, the meter's gone, but uh, the wiring's still there. 
So my initial thought on this was Hydro, Manitoba Hydro did not like that the, even though it was in a PVC chase conduit, that they didn't like that. So my understanding was the splice was actually going to be in ground. So I was surprised to see, and I don't quite understand the thinking behind this. Um, yes, there was a meter there, but uh, they didn't like the meter there. So they put a splice into this box. Um, so yeah, I'm a little confused with that, but it is what it is. <laughs> so the original one comes up into here, then they spliced it in and went down and of course dug the hole through and over to the meter location on the new pole. Piper, are you just enjoying the sun? <coughs> yeah, he's just standing there motionless. <laughs> well, there's, it's gonna get cold uh, next week. The weather's changing. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be closing the animals in shortly. So uh, that will be uh, the coming of winter. Okay, here we go. So the meter will go uh, through a series of numbers. Okay, so we can see that we've got square, square, arrow, and that is to the left. That means we are actually sending power to the grid. So that's exciting. If it goes block, block, arrow to the right, it means we're receiving power from the grid. Uh, now, if we look at the numbers here, delivered, so delivered from Hydro, Manitoba Hydro, 922 kilowatts since it was installed on the 30th, and they have received 79 kilowatts from us. Oh boy, what's going on over there? <laughs> so uh, there's all the numbers, then it cycles through uh, those readings. So what I'm gonna end up doing, because the app that I have uh, doesn't show the power that I've used in the house, uh, just the overflow. So this meter will actually show the overflow, uh, what we've received from the grid and what we've sent to the grid and that's it. But I have what I'm producing off the app. Uh, so the app is pretty easy to install and understand. Uh, I've got it here on my phone. Uh, and you can see I am producing not, uh, sorry, 5.91 kilowatts of power currently. Uh, and you know, the sun is a little low on the horizon uh, in the summertime with its, uh, when its angle is a lot better, um, I can get uh, theoretically up to 10.56. Now, of course, that's theoretical, not actual. Uh, 5.91 that I'm getting now is currently the highest that I've had. Uh, so you go in and you've got a few different things. This is um, for the day on what I've produced. Uh, so 7.30 this morning, the sun came out and I started producing power. And you can see the change there on that, uh, on that chart. And then you go into what each panel is producing. So each panel, I'm getting uh, 352 watts out of that one, 355 watts. Uh, these panels are 480, again, theoretical, uh, 480 watt panels. Uh, so you can see they're all producing nicely. Uh, and then we've got just another screen that talks about uh, our plant details. <laughs> rooster going off in the background here. Had to get away from that loud rooster. <laughs> just couldn't, couldn't think right. <laughs> uh, anyway, the, um, the pre-inspection. So I did talk about the pre-energy audit inspection that took place. Uh, back in the spring so we had to finish off our what's called greener homes grant which is the federal program uh, then we have the efficiency manitoba which is the provincial program so i should be getting about ten thousand dollars back five thousand from each of those plus i believe they're giving me another 250 250 dollars for the attic insulation that i topped up from r28 to r50 uh, and then they give you, I think, $750 for the, po the pre and the post inspection uh, to cover that. So I should be getting that in, they say, 40 days, 60 days, 40 days, I don't know. In a couple months, <laughs> it's a, it is a government program, so who knows, but I'll get that money coming in to offset. So the total price paid 
for the system, not including the extra work that I had to do for Manitoba Hydro to get the meter moved. Uh, the total amount was around $32,000 Canadian. Of course, uh, with the rebates, I'm getting, you know, down $22,000 plus, say, another hundred bucks. So the system, $21,000 Canadian for a 10.56 kilowatt system, which I did get a couple quotes on, and this one seemed to be the best uh, bang for my buck. The post retrofit inspection, uh, that was done last week, and it was interesting to compare the pre-inspection with the post inspection. So of course I'll put something up right here and you'll see this is the pre-inspection. Uh, I believe it says that a standard house is 117 kilojoules annually is what a standard home like mine would use annually. Uh, I believe I was showing 124 kilojoules. So I was a little bit higher. My house is 16 years old. Okay, can understand that. Uh, but then I got the post inspection and I believe that one was 74 kilojoules per, per annual. So I'm better than a standard house, which is of course what I was going for. Uh, now, one thing I didn't do is I didn't do the heat pump system. I'm still looking into that. I would like to get a heat pump system to offset my electric furnace. Uh, and my savings there, I believe, was about 40 kilojoules annually. Uh, I have that in the report. Uh, so heat pump systems are much better efficiency than just a standard um, uh, electric uh, furnace. And of course, I'm out in a rural area and we don't have natural gas here. But of course, natural gas, uh, on that report again, you'll see that I believe the carbon footprint was at 0 0.1. Uh, so it is extremely low because we are running electric. And here in Manitoba, Manitoba Hydro, hydro meaning water, uh, Manitoba Hydro generates its power primarily from water and from dams. So there is a very small amount. I think the number is roughly around 98, 98, 98.5% uh, renewable energy. So uh, Manitoba is great for that. We've got lots of water uh, producing and exporting a lot of power. So speaking of power, we pay roughly nine and a half cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, so that's what's coming in from the grid. That's what we get charged. We don't get that money back when sending it back to the grid. Uh, I believe in its early days, that's the way the system worked. Uh, but you know, they, uh, they changed it for whatever reason, needed some more, uh, some more money for infrastructure, who knows. Uh, but I believe the number is about five and a half cents a kilowatt, a kilowatt hour, sending back to the grid, that's what we get. So ideally, you know, you want to make hay when the sun shines, so to speak. Uh, my wife, Tara, she was talking about, uh, well, I'll just do the laundry on a nice sunny day. <laughs> you can see from the meter, we are sending power back to the grid. So we've, we're producing in excess is what we're actually using currently. Of course, the temperature is fairly mild. I believe it's about eight degrees Celsius, uh, but it's soon going to be well into the negative digits uh, in the next week or two. So um, we may not be sending too much back to the grid unless it's a sunny day and the furnace has done its heating and is then shut off. So I think we will send, send stuff back to the grid. But in August, June, June, July, August, in around the midsummer months, we should have uh, should have a credit on our bill. So that's exciting to see as well. And that's something we will cover 12 months from now uh, in the uh, update video. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing the installation from the beginning right to the end of this system. If you have any questions, please put it down in the, uh, in the comment section. We have learned quite a bit from this process. We know a lot more now than we did when it all started. And if you need uh, any information at all, please let us know. Mm -hmm.